Okay, we are recording. Welcome, everybody. Um, if this is your first time joining an online workshop, welcome. This is your hundredth time, welcome. Um, while you are joining, uh, if you would like to code along with me today, there is a plugin that you can download and install. Um, it's it's basically the the plugin that we worked on in last week's session. I just placed it in the chat now. Um, and it's where we will start from today. If you were coding along in last week's session, then you could probably just use last week's code. Um, there might be a few differences here and there, but it should mostly be the same as what's in this plugin. Um, okay, while you are joining, I'll, I'll do my usual introductions. Please also consider letting us know in the chat where you're joining us from. Um, as always, my name is Jonathan. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. It is in the middle of summer in Cape Town. It is January and February are the two hottest months. Um, so it is sweltering hot at the moment. Uh, we're looking at 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. That's about 95 to 100, I think, Fahrenheit every day. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's the middle of summer. It's crazy hot, but uh, we're managing through. Um, I am... Um, I suppose I call myself an ex-developer, but I guess I still am a developer because I still write code, I still create things, um, but I don't push them to production sites anymore. I create them for these sessions. So I'm now what I call a code instructor, in other terms, a developer educator, those other terms for it. Um, but I work at Automatic, I'm sponsored to work with the training team, and we create these online workshops and the tutorials and, and various things for the Learn WordPress platform. Um, Okay, today today we're going to be interacting with the with the uh, WordPress REST API, with the WP REST API. Uh, if you joined last week's session, we we got an introduction to the REST API. We created some GET GET requests. Uh, we we started building uh, a bit of a plugin to um, use the REST API through the Backbone JS client that's available to WordPress. And today we're going to start interact, interacting with the WordPress REST API a little bit. We're going to create some posts and delete some posts. Um, and we're going to learn to use the REST API a little bit better today. Uh, as always, a few announcements. Welcome, everybody. Um, Leo was going to be my co-host today. If, you, if you've met Leo before, he's co-hosted a few times. Unfortunately, he had a bit of a family emergency at the last minute. So he is unable to join us. So Leo, if you catch this video afterwards, I hope everything is well. Um, as always, we are presenting in focus mode, uh, but you are you are welcome to enable your video if you would like me to see your face. You don't have to if you don't want to, um, but focus mode is just there to prevent any instances of Zoom bombing. Um, you are always, as always, welcome to ask questions, uh, and you're welcome to post those questions in the chat or unmute to ask questions. Um, and if you have a question about something we're doing on screen, you're welcome to ask it while we're doing it. If it's not specific to what we're doing on screen, I do allow uh, pauses for, for sort of tangential questions or maybe something else you're thinking about or asking about a future session or anything like that. Um, just to mention, if anybody is connecting via a Linux desktop and they can't see my screen, apologies, that is a known issue that we've discovered recently with Zoom. Uh, I have a meeting with one of my colleagues. It was supposed to happen today, but it was rescheduled to next week, unfortunately to test this out and see if we can figure out a workaround. Uh, but I will do my best to uh, sort of talk you through the code that we're looking at, sharing the links, and, and hopefully with the plugin download and, and what we're talking about, you'll be able to see and follow along with what we're doing. Um, Sergio says, I'm on Linux and looking fine. Thank you, Sergio, for that. That's useful to know. It seems to be um, on, on, under certain environments only. I'm wondering if it's got to do with Wayland. Uh, which is the windowing system that I think Ubuntu switched to recently. Um, so I still need to figure that out. So I'm going to switch between the two when I do my test. But uh, Sergio, if you don't mind, when you get a chance, maybe uh, DMing me or something, you'll set up what, what OS you're using and what windowing system you're using that might help me narrow things down. Uh, you're welcome to send me a private message here in the chat or um, on Twitter or via email at my stage. Um, okay. Yeah, if you are coding along, make sure your local install is ready. Uh, we just you just need a WordPress environment and a plugin and a code editor. Um, I have linked the plugin link earlier in the chat. I'm going to paste it again just for anybody who's joining late. Um, I probably there's a possibility I might start going fast today because I'm a little bit tired. So if, if I'm going too fast, please feel free to slow me down. 
Um, and as always, I will be posting this to WordPress TV afterwards during the course of the day tomorrow. And you can find more WordPress focused content on learn.wordpress.org, which is where I spend most of my day updating and creating content there. All right, so our learning outcomes for today, we're going to be looking at the WordPress REST API endpoint reference documentation, um, specifically reviewing the post schema. We're going to talk about what that is and how it works and what you can use it for. Um, if you've interacted with any kind of API before, the, the schema documentation will look very familiar to you. Um, and then we'll and then we'll just start writing some code. There's not a lot of theory today. It's mostly practical. Last week lots, there's lots of theory. Today is lots of practical. Um, and we're going to update the plugin to allow us to create a post. And we're going to update the plugin to allow us to delete, delete a post. Um, we're also going to delete all that AJAX uh, code because we don't need it anymore. Um, and if you want to, if you want to have a fun, uh, well, I think it's fun uh, conversation around AJAX versus not AJAX. A fellow contributor to, to the WordPress uh, open source project opened up a pull request to my to my example code repo uh, asking me to remove jQuery um, because vanilla JS can handle a fetch request. We're doing that in our code. Um, I agree that we, we shouldn't use jQuery if we if we can if we can avoid it, uh, because most of what jQuery was built for can be done using vanilla JS. Um, so I do agree with Eric, Eric, Yo, or Eric, I think his first name is Eric, Eric's recommendation to remove jQuery. That having been said, sometimes jQuery is fun if you're just prototyping something or if it's an existing project that's already using jQuery. Um, so I don't, I don't uh, say you should never use jQuery, uh, but I do agree with Eric's suggestion of removing it from this project, which we were going to do anyway. Um, so I thought that was a fun, a fun bit in the week. Okay, and then if we have time, I'm going to quickly show you a tool that you can use when you're testing APIs. Um, it's called Postman, some of you may have used it already. Um, it's very handy for working with REST API endpoints, uh, testing them, seeing what response, what requests they can receive, what responses they can get. Um, we're not going to dive, if we have time to look at Postman today, we're not going to dive too much into it because I plan on diving further into how we can use Postman next week. Um, and it also requires you to have Postman installed on your machine. Um, so, so I would say if you're going to be joining next week's session on the REST API, install Postman if you can uh, up front. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll talk a bit about, more about that next week. And then specifically our objective, objectives today, we're going to... Objectives one. We only have one set of object, objectives. So don't remind me. Uh, we're going to specifically be setting up and reviewing example plugin we're going to learn to read and understand the REST API schema which I spoke about, update the plugin to create posts, update the plugin to delete posts, and then look at some JavaScript refactoring that we can do, which is not specific to the REST API, but it's possibly another way of looking at doing things, um, again, if we have time for that. Uh, so that, those are our goals today. Those are my, my tick boxes that I need to make sure I cover um, before this workshop is done. Okay. Any questions on all of that? Um, any problems, any issues? I'm going to grab a sip of the last sip of my of my energy drink, and then we can, and then we can get going. All right, so let's just quickly review the plugin that we have installed. Um, super toolbar gets in my way. Uh, so I have already installed the plugin on my local WordPress site. Hope everybody can see this. If you can't, please let me know. So there it is, WP Learn REST API version 002. Uh, this adds the WP Learn admin page to the site. It is a simple screen with the load post by admin Ajax button, which does an Ajax request. And let me pop open the developer console so you can see that request happening. Um, network. Let's refresh this page. Out. For some reason, my console is very big today. Um, so, if we, uh, so there it's doing the Ajax request, returning the posts. Um, and then we also created the lows post via REST option, which does the same thing but it uses a REST API. Uh, the slight difference there you'll notice if we clear the posts here, loading the post via admin Ajax using whatever default functionality we used seems broken. <laughs> Probably because of some bug in my code somewhere. So let's just refresh it again. Um, it only returns five posts because we're using get posts, which defaults to five posts. Uh, whereas doing it by the REST API defaults to 10, which is a setting on the REST API. So just an interesting difference between the two solutions. 
Um, thanks, Sergio. I neon on the KDS desktop. Yes, that's perfect. I'll, I'll do some research on that and see what, what that's using. Um, okay, and then there's a clear post button which just resets the text area to back to nothing. And that's all the all the functionality that this plugin does currently. Let's review the code. And let's see, pop over to uh, So let's pop over onto the code. So in the PHP side, we have the admin menu being created. Very simple and straightforward uh, WordPress stuff there. Uh, then we have the admin men menu page callback, which loads the HTML that displays that page. Ah, I just hit that one mistake. <laughs> um, and then there is the admin in queue scripts uh, function, or at least the hook into that action, which enqueues the, the REST API JavaScript file and sets up the learn AJAX object so that we can pass the AJAX URL to the front end. And then there is the AJAX uh, handler, which handles the AJAX request, gets the post, and re returns the post as JSON. Then on the JavaScript side, we have our entire jQuery set up over here to handle the Ajax request. Um, it basically gets the load post button uh, by the ID, make sure that the load post button exists on the page. So this is basically, if it's anywhere else, this will, this will fail and then will trigger the rest of this code. And then it registers the onClick handler, which is the function that posts to the Ajax URL. It posts the first learn fetch posts action so that that action hook fires returns the posts, captures the post into this array, and then loops through the post using the for each uh, function and appends the post title to the text area um, input. So that's the Ajax way. Then the clear post button is basically just doing the same thing, getting the button, checking if the button exists. In other words, can we create that button by ID? Uh, there's, there might be a better way to do this, but this is the way that I know to do it. Uh, but that's not important for the rest of the API. And then adds the click event listener, um, returns a function it, it, that, that will fire this function. And the function gets the element to the learn posts text area by the ID and just sets the value to an empty string. And then finally, the loading of the posts using the REST API, again, all the checks, the event handler. So that's basically binding to the click event of the button. And that uses the WordPress Backbone.js API client and creates a new posts collection. Um, and then it fetches the data from the database and, and basically returns it um, and sets up a done function. So when that fetch has happened, it's an asynchronous request. So when it's finished, then the done function will fire and will pass the results of the posts into this post variable. And then again, just gets the text area, does another loop, same as we did in Ajax, and then adds the type. Um, the one thing that we didn't do last week, which I'd like to cover very quickly now, is in the fetch, we're passing in an object uh, of data. And then the data object property is the value is another object. And here we're specifying the underscore fields, which you'll remember is one of the global parameters where you can filter the fields that you're querying. And we're specifically just querying the title field. Um, so if you had a look at this post object in the console, let's actually do that now quickly. Um, let's get them to have a look at. So if I console log posts there, and I switch back to my browser, I'm going to refresh, and I'm going to switch onto the console. You'll see that there's the post, um, the posts array, and it's just returning the title. So that was what we spoke about filtering your data. Um, so just says, can you share your screen, please? Um, so Joe, my screen is being shared. That was that was kind of what I was saying about Linux and screen sharing being a problem. Um, are you not seeing my screen? Are you just seeing my face? Uh, okay, so that is unfortunately the situation. Um, on Linux clients, we are we are discovering problems with um, with Zoom screen sharing. I'm not sure what it is. I need to test it. Um, so, if you would like to to try this with me, if you have the plugin installed um, on line 50 of the JavaScript file, you can just console log posts variable refresh the page and then load the post via virus. I apologize for this. Um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along. If you get stuck, send me a message in the chat and I'll gladly stop and just make sure you're in the same place as this. Um, okay. Uh, I'd love to know what that problem is. It's bugging me now and I will find out one way or another. 
Okay, um, any questions on all of that code? It's what we worked on last week. If you didn't join last week's session, don't worry, it's, it's not like it's, it's necessary. We're gonna start working with it today. But any questions on all of that code, if you're looking at it now in either my screen or on your, on your side, any questions on how anything works, doesn't make sense to you, uh, feel free to ask them now. Um, otherwise, I'll just give us a 30 second break and then we can, we can start writing some more code. Uh, I put a question in the chat, but maybe you're not seeing it. I'm also not sure if you can hear me. I can hear you. Um, your, ah, was, your question, was your question the one about the WP API collection uh, being that, available? That's correct. That's okay, fine. excellent. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Babak. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly there. Um, yes, so I did I did cover this in last week's session, but we can, we can gladly uh, go over it again very quickly today. Um, so in last week's session, we spoke about under using the REST API. Can you see my screen? I can, yes. Okay, excellent. So if you go to the, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste the link in the chat anyway, so that other folks who want to go along can go along with us. If you go to the API reference documentation under the using the REST API section, there's a section on the backbone JS client. Um, and that is a backbone uh, uh, JS, which is a JavaScript framework uh, client library that is written for WordPress, that is available to WordPress. The only thing that you need to do to make sure that your code can use it is either use this functionality to enqueue that script, or if you're using your own JavaScript, you set it up as a dependency. So here, array WP API. So if you have a look at the plugin code that you've installed, if you have installed it, and you go to the PHP file and you scroll up to the WP learn rest enqueue script function, you'll see there I am specifying WP API as a dependency. So what that means is my JavaScript code will only run once that dependency is loaded, that dependency is loaded by, by default with WordPress every time WordPress fires. Um, and it's available, as far as I know, in both front end and back end. Uh, I'm just working in the back end right now. I'm going to move over to doing things in the front end at a later stage. But as far as I know, it is possible to use it um, on the front end as well. Uh, so we, when we get to, I'm going to later on, we're going to build something for the front end in one of the future sessions. And we'll see how we can do that. But it should be available if you've set it up in that. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, it does, and it uh, explains a lot, or it clears up a lot of uh, uh, issues that I've had with uh, back issues or uh, error messages around uh, uh, backbone, which I didn't know where they were coming from in the front end. Okay, uh, but I do Excellent. have a follow-up question. Then, okay. is there a reason why I would include WP API as opposed to just uh, calling the REST endpoint by URL? Good question. Do I get more um, than, uh, so what you what you get by including WP API is you get sort of built in um, the built in models and collections that that backbone client makes available to you. So as an example, let me let me go down to this code over here. Um, so for me to um, fetch a, a list of posts using the, the URL endpoint, if I was going to use let's say something like the window fetch, which is available in browsers or whatever, I would need to make the request and then specify the URL and then I would I need to do a little bit more work. Whereas here I can literally, if I just wanted all posts, um, I can actually take out this filtering over here and just create a new collection and then just fetch all posts. I don't have to tell, I don't have to tell it what the post endpoint is. You'll also see later on today when we're creating um, a post, there's additional functionality that comes along with that as well, uh, which is in my opinion where the advantage comes in. Um, so it basically, it makes it simpler to interact with the WordPress REST API data objects. You don't have to. Um, a, a while ago, I actually worked on a plugin where we were interacting with the REST API, and I just used the fetch um, function, and I just called with the URL, and I did things that way. So there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. This is just a little bit easier for somebody who's, who's used to it, uh, new to it, sorry, for the first time. Uh, I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah, totally. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how it benefits uh, faster coding soon. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that in a second. Um, Shelly says, "Can you use that backbone JS to load a custom post up?" Um, that's actually a good question, Shelly. Um, to the best of my knowledge, you can, but I think it requires a little bit of work because obviously it's got it's got. Um, if we have a look at the documentation, um, it's got specific models and collections available to the default. Um, post types in WordPress. 
Um, but I think it is possible. I actually don't know for sure because I haven't done it yet. We're going to do it in a future session. I'm planning a future session around creating a custom post type, setting it up in Backbone, accessing it and all those kind of things. Um, so I don't know for sure that the answer is yes, but I do think the answer is yes. Um, and I would, I would suggest we're probably going to do it. My plan is next week to work on authentication um, and how that works and using the Postman API to kind of test endpoints and, and maybe and that's where we're going to maybe look at building something on the front end and we might need to do some authentication. And then in a future session, I'm planning on doing custom post types and how we interact with those. And then in the future session, I'm planning on doing metadata and custom fields and how we work with that. So it's all coming, it's all coming in future requests. So um, I'll, I'll have the definitive answer for you when I do that research. Uh, Sergio says, isn't this more performant too, since you aren't making all these HTTP requests? Yes, probably. Um, again, I don't know the definitive answer to that. But probably it is more performant because you're using things that are already there. Um, it, it, it essentially boils down to the same HTTP request because it's a request to the REST API. Um, but because it's kind of built in, it's probably more performant to use uh, Backbone uh, as not. I actually had somebody um, on Twitter recently um, ask me that they were, what they would like to see is they would like to see me build it using Backbone JS and then using like the same maybe the same structure the same layout but using um uh pure react so that might be something we could do in a future session as well um yeah yeah same request that might be something we can look at we can maybe look at building with backbone with fetch and then doing some kind of of um benchmarking and seeing what happens so yeah it, it, those are interesting things we can dive into unfortunately i wish i knew everything about wordpress uh, I'm, I'm also learning as we go through this, but uh, yeah, that could be an interesting. That might be something I could do on a live stream. We'll do, we'll do, you know, use Window Fetch. We'll use Background JS, and then do some benchmarking. See which one is faster. Um, okay, cool. In interesting questions, folks. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to mentally take notes. So I can make notes later, and we can, and we can uh, think about these things. One thing I will say. Uh, let me let me suggest this to you all. If you have these kinds of questions, uh, and you would like me to revisit them. If you go to, no, it's not my name, sorry, let me see my face again. Uh, if we go, if you go to, I'm going to share this link in the chat. If you go to GitHub WordPress Learn, um, this is the GitHub repository for the Learn WordPress pro, uh, website and for the training team. We use this to manage all of our content. Uh, the code itself for the Learn WordPress website is all managed here. So this is like our core, if you will. Um, and if you click on issues, and then filter by assignee myself. And I, because I am logged in, it shows me at the top of the list, but find myself on the list. Then you will see that I have issues for all my online workshops that I'm either planning or have ran the previous week. Um, and so here, for example, is the interacting with, with the WP REST API. Um, these questions that you've asked today, if you would like me to do them in future sessions, feel free to comment on the issue um either after the session maybe you think of something else or you want me to remember the question uh, as a comment leave it there for me and then i can come back to it later because i love knowing what people want to know and then presenting those topics so so please feel free to do that i think i'm going to going forward i'm going to include the github issue in my in my slides so that they have been available uh, now i have to remember that anyway <laughs> okay right let's get going so um documentation um, now, one of the things that I love about the REST API is it's one of the things in WordPress that was developed fairly recently over the last couple of years. I think development started around 2014, 2015, 2016, there in the regard. Um, and it was developed by a um, developer who works for a company called Human Made. He's now the CTO of Human Made. Um, and he made sure that the documentation that came with the merging of the REST API was very well written. So you can learn all about the REST API just by reading the documentation. And one of the great things about um, the documentation is there is an endpoint reference. And this endpoint reference, and remember we spoke about last week, the endpoint is the different methods that you can um, send to a root. So a root being a URL. So if it was wp-json slash p2 slash post or something like that. Um, let's actually go back to that, that section. Where was it here? Here we go. So if we make a GET request to the WPJSON um, endpoint, sorry, the root is the URI, which can be mapped to methods, and the mapping of a different method is known as an endpoint. 
So the endpoint reference is all the different options you have for the different routes. So for example, if we click on the posts route or the post resource, if you will, um, it has the schema for that, um, that endpoint. And the schema is basically the fields that exist within a post record. Um, now these fields pretty much map up to the actual fields in the post table in the database. So we have the date, we have date GMT, we have the GUID, we have the ID field. If you've worked with the post table, and many of these fields will be familiar to you. One thing that you will notice is that some fields aren't direct links, direct matches. And I specifically am going to use the title field. Um, so those of you who, who might have worked with the post table before, you'll know that the field in the database is post underscore title. In the REST API, it's just title. So that means when you're working with your REST API endpoints and you, for example, um, and, I, and this is where I got stuck in my session last week, and you're wanting to filter by a specific field and your brain is saying, hang on, I want to filter by post underscore title, that doesn't work, you need to filter by title. So it's a good idea to understand and have read the endpoints um, schema for, your, for the type of data that you're working with. The other great thing about this documentation is if you scroll down, they are examples of what you can do to list posts, to create a post, the arguments that you can pass. So it's quite full feature. Um, so for example, to create a post, you can specify the date, the date GMT, you can specify the slug, the status, the password, all of these kinds of things. Um, so it's a good idea to read through the documentation, to, to have it working for you. Um, you'll notice that they give examples of just a plain old get request. So you can get post by ID uh, or, a, or a curl example if you're used to using curl on the, on the command line. Um, and then you can also use this to test out your requests in Postman or one of those things. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of this and, and knows where to find it. Uh, then you can do updating of posts. You can do um, deleting of posts. Everything is here. Um, and, you can just, and you can just read and learn and figure out how all these things work. Okay. So that is the theory for today. Um, today, we're going to be working specifically on creating posts and deleting posts. We're not going to dive into all of the fields. I'm just going to show you very simply really post title and post content. Um, and then I'm going to show you what that does in the model and how it puts things together and what it sends and what it, what it retrieves. And then we'll do a delete. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do my favorite thing. So if you are coding along with me, I'd like you to join me in one of the, I believe, most satisfying parts of software development, and that's deleting code you don't need anymore. Um, so we don't need the Ajax loading of posts anymore because we're, we're moving away from the old. So I'm going to take this inside section of code here and I'm going to delete it. It's gone. Okay, we don't need it anymore because we're loading, we're loading posts via, via the REST API. So that's in the JavaScript file where you delete everything to do with that jQuery line. If you're, if you're coding along and you can't see my screen, it's everything from line one down to line 27. We could just go ahead and delete that. And then in the PHP file, we do still need the admin menu. Uh, we do still need the render admin page because we're going to be working with that. In the loading of the main JavaScript file, because we're using WP API, the background client, we again don't need the script localization and setting up the admin URL. So we can delete all of that code. So if you can't see my screen, that's line 53 to 62. So we can delete all of that. And again, the Ajax callback at the bottom, we could delete all of that as well. Um, okay. So now we've got much cleaner code, which I think I, I know I like, and I'm sure lots of you like as well. And the cool thing now is we don't have to touch the PHP side again unless we're adding fields to the form because we're going to do most of the work in the JavaScript side, um, but we're going to start working with the form. So let's have a look at what that looks like on the front end quickly. If I refresh that page, we've still got the add an Ajax button, so we can delete that as well. So if you go into the render form submissions admin page, the button is the very first one at the top, the WP learn Ajax button, we can delete that. And if we refresh that, we've got all of that good to go. Okay, so we can load post via REST, that's good, and we can clear post, excellent. Okay. So now we want to create a simple form that will allow us to um, create some posts. So in the coding window, what I like to do is I just like to wrap things in div so that they're just nicely laid out. Obviously this depends on the design and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the first section, the, um, 
the admin post text area section. No, sorry, not that section, but the section below it. Um, I'm going to create another div. Just thinking now, this is probably not going to work how I want it to. Give me a second there. I'm going to create another div uh, and close it. And then in here, I'm going to have a H2 tag. Uh, and I'm going to call that post. And then I'm going to use some text fields. Um, I don't need I don't need to create a form field because I'm not using the submission process. Um, I'm going to use the form field anyway, just because I like to have it sort of clear in my mind what I'm working with. Um, so I'm going to have that there. There's the form. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another div. And if you're wondering, yes, I am looking off screen. Uh, to remind myself how I want this to work. Um, and then I want to have a label. Um, let's close that. And I want to have a input type. And I can say there. For the label, I'm going to have post title. For the input, I want it to be spelled today. I want it to be text. Um, I'm going to give it an ID. And I'm not going to worry about this all the nice things now. For the ID, I'm going to call WP learn, no, sorry, WP learn post type. So we keep it nice and simple. Then I'm simply going to copy this code and we're going to say, Post content. And this I'm going to make a text area. Uh, so we're going to take up the text area. There we go. And we can give it a different ID. And that can be WP Learn Post Content. If you are coding along, don't worry, I will give a chance to catch up if you need to. Uh, let's just see what this looks like quickly. It's probably not going to look very pretty. Um, okay, it, it definitely doesn't look very pretty. Um, so, so we can fix that a little bit. So I'm going to leave this on screen if you're coding along with me. Um, what I'm going to do to the text area is I'm going to add some columns so that it's a bit wider. You'll see in the original post text area, we made it 125 columns. So I'm going to make this 100 here. And then I'm going to make it 10 rows. Um, so that will make the text area a little bit larger. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a little bit better, but it's still kind of still kind of wonky. So normally in, in normal situations, I would I would spend some time styling this or just make it a little bit prettier. I'm going to cheat a little bit uh, and I'm going to add an inline style to the div that contains this, this creation post. And I'm going to make it with. 50%. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to force the div to be 50% of the page, and it just kind of forces the post content to kind of realign underneath. Uh, so let me show you what that does in actual um, HTML. Let me just inspect this. So there's the div there. No, not that one. This one. And you'll see that I'm using my finger to point. Um, but you can see where it's blue and orange. That's because I'm forcing the div to only be 50% of width, but the text area is, is wider, so it forces it below. A little bit of a cheat. Uh, it's because I'm doing it for a demo today. Um, so that's not how I'd recommend doing it. But for our purposes, it's, it's perfect because we just want something simple that we can post data to. Okay, um, I'm going to leave this on screen if anybody wants to copy this code or needs to just catch up uh, and see where you are. If you are coding along and you're, you're good to go, give me a thumbs up uh, in the chat, and then we'll start creating. Oh, I just remembered something. We need a button to trigger all of this, don't we? <laughs> uh, we need a button. So let's create another div um, and close it. And then let's put in a button. Uh, no, let's do this way. Type equals button. 
um, and we'll give it an ID of WP learn uh, submit post. Um, and then we'll just give it a value of add. So it just makes sense. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Let's see if that looks like on the front end. Uh, there we go. Add button. It doesn't do anything right now, but it's there. Okay. Um, so I'll leave that on screen. If you need to follow along, grab a sip of water, and then you can continue. If anybody needs me to stop and hold that for a second, let me know. But uh, otherwise, I should be good to go. Hmm. All right. What I'm going to also do, if anybody needs to copy this code, I'm just going to pop it in the chat quickly. Uh, should post, there we go. So if you need it, it's there. Um, so it's a very simple form. It's just going to give us a title, a content, and an ad button. Now we need to start creating a post. So we're going to use the post title and the post content. Uh, and I'm going to show you how sort of quick and easy it is to create this post and why I think using background is a good idea for this example. So we can use the same kind of functionality to check the button exists and all those kind of things. Uh, so I'm just going to cheat outrageously by copying this code. I'm just going to say, yeah, create a post. Let's slow down a little bit so it's more on screen. So it's this time it's not going to be load post button. It's going to be the add post button. So it's this one over here, WP load submit post. Um, so I'm going to replace that with that there. So we're getting that by the ID. So it will be a submit post button or an add post button. So add post button, uh, which means we can check again, is it not undefined? If it's not null, then we know that things are happy. And then we can grab these closing brackets as well. Um, there we go. So in here, we're going to be able to do something. Okay, so we're creating a variable based on the element by ID. Um, if that element doesn't exist on the page, it will either be undefined or null. So that's what this check is doing. And it's saying, if it is not undefined or it's not null, um, then we can then we can start doing something with it. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Yes, there's the event listener, so let's update that as well. So we need to add the event listener to the correct button. Um, and it's the click event. And then it will trigger this function. Currently, we're not passing anything to it, but then we can, we can manage our code there. Okay. I'm going to copy this out again and pop it in the chat if anybody needs to see it. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. If you need me to slow down, please let me know. Um, but now we can start creating our post. Okay. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to get the fields. Um, and the simple way to do that is, again, to use the document get element by ID. So it will be uh, const uh, title. Uh, and we'll say document get element by ID. I love um, code it's autocomplete. And I'll what I'll do here is I'll just create one for the content as well. So we're ready to go. Um, and then we just need to grab those IDs from our form. So it'll be WP Learn Post Title and WP Learn Post Content. So here we go. So learn post title and post content. Um, and we need to get the value of these things. And what's cool about JavaScript is I can just say value there. Uh, if I didn't say value, it would return the entire element. I don't need the entire element. I just need the value. Um, so title there will be the type, the value of the title field, uh, and content will be the content. If you wanted to be more explicit, you could say title value. Uh, but in this instance, title will be, will be sufficient. Now we want to create our post. And to create our post, we can use, and let me pop on over to um, the documentation. And I'm going to grab a link out of my resources slide, which is the very last one. Um, no, I don't have it in my resources slide. That's annoying. I do have it in my notes. So let me grab it from my notes, share it in the chat, and then share it in the resources slide as well. Um, so it's going to be, now I'll update the slide. So you all have it in case you are watching this afterwards. Um, so this, this is the documentation on using the background client. And there is an example of how to use the model um, to create posts, for example. 
So we can effectively just take this entire line here. So I'm going to copy out this whole line. If you're on that page, um, it's the first sort of section of code here. Uh, and we're going to use that refactor. So I'm just going to copy that whole line there. And I'm going to not catch this one. I'm going to pop it in here. Uh, I'm going to change the bar to const because const is a more modern way of creating variables. And it's literally just new WP API models post. And then I can pass in my title and I can pass in my content. Um, okay, sorry about that, Sergio. Um, I hope you're able to watch it afterwards. Um, I'll, I'll connect with you afterwards to find out what you're using and maybe you can help us with the test. I do apologize. Uh, Sergio just probably messaged me to say he wasn't able to follow along. Um, okay, so I'm going to just pop this object onto a new line so we can see what this looks like. Um, what a backslash there. Uh, and this is this is where I like using the background JS client because now I can just basically go title and pass in the value of the title, and I can go content and pass in the content value. Um, and what that's going to do, I want to show you this in the front end so you can see what this does. So let's log this to the console. Um, is it's going to create the post object ready to be inserted into the database, and because it has the schema. Uh, because the backbone JS client knows what the schema for the posts are and what the default value should be, it's going to pre populate all that information for us. Um, so, let me quickly show you what that looks like. Um, just checking my notes here to make sure that everything is good. Yes, everything is good. So, let me show you what that does. Uh, no, not that one, that one. Okay. So, let's pop over to the console. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see the code. Uh, and let's refresh, and then let's create it up. So we'll just give it a new title, whatever the case may be, and some content, and we're going to click on the Add button. Now, this is not going to add it yet. We're just creating the model, um, but I want to show you what this does. So what I like about this is in the attributes object, it has the content and the title. Um, and it's now going to... Okay, this is this is interesting. When I was working with this the other day, it was doing something else. Uh, and it's not doing what I'm expecting it to do, which is weird. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, possibly I did the wrong thing. So it looks like I've made an a, a incorrect uh, comment there. So it hasn't done what I thought it would do. But when I was working with it yesterday, it almost to me looked like it was setting up default values, like setting up a default um, status, setting up a, a predefined default ID. Um, maybe I did something wrong here, but I can't remember. So I'm going to have to take that step back and say it doesn't do those things. Um, so anyway, we'll just have to reset. So here is our, our post object ready to be inserted. It has the content, it has the title, um, and we can now insert this post. And to do that, we can just use the post save function or method. So if we go back to the code, we can say, um, Post, sorry, post, no, save, and that will create the post. Um, but it would be nice to do something with that post afterwards, maybe to inspect the data, make sure it's been saved, what data has been saved. So you can chain the done function after that, and that will return the newly created post. Um, and then in that function, you can alert, uh, send a message to the user, whatever the case may be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log the post out, um, and then I'm going to, sorry, uh, it looks like I possibly, oh, I have done something wrong here, so let me go back one step. So it's done, function, it's a function, it needs to be called, it's a callback function, and that receives the post, and then we can open the function, so there we go, so it's done, uh, so we save the post, then once the save is done, we set up the callback function, it receives the newly created post object. Um, and then we could say something like, let's alert uh, post saved. And then let's just console log that post. Um, there we go. And there we go. And then we will need to close this. So that will be there. And putting us in the row. Okay, so that takes that out of the way. Let's clear that. Um, and this is what I like about using Backbone.js. It is essentially one line of code 
Uh, you could make this even easier by you could pass the value from here straight into the object, or you could set up the object here and just pass the object in with all your fields, and then it's essentially post save and you're good to go. Um, so let's have a look at what that does. Um, so let us refresh over here. So let's load the post. There are all our posts. Let's create a new post, a new post with some content. And if we add that, the post is saved. Let's check. Yes, the post has been saved. It has an author, it has categories, comment status is open. So these are all the defaults. Um, various things, GUID, ID, all these kinds of things. Um, it has our, our title, which we specified. I can't see the title right now. Maybe down here, there we go. Title, a new post. It has the content with some content that we specified. Um, and the post has been set. If we, if we click on over to the post list, we will see there is a new post uh, with the content. Now, what's interesting is it saves it as a classic block because we haven't posted block markup, which I find quite interesting. Uh, so this all works with the classic editor as well. So if you're using the classic editor, there's no reason you don't have to use the REST API. Um, but you can also pass in block mark. So for example, um, so let's say another new post. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new block line here. So it's got some content. And you don't have to follow this along if you don't want to, but your block markup will have, uh, if we switch to the code editor, we'll have some paragraph tags. So if you want to pass those in, I'll stick them in the in the chat if you want to play with that. But if you if you pass that in raw, because obviously this text area is just raw data, um, and there we go, and you create this post, add, post has been saved, and let's refresh our list of posts. Yes, there's another new post. There it is. And if we exit the code editor, there is the block content saved. So you can create classic content, you can create block content, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, and that is how quick and easy it is to create a post uh, using the Backbone JS client uh, and using, using plain old JavaScript. So I'm going to leave this on screen if you want to follow this along, if you are following this along on your side, uh, if there are any questions around creating posts right now, uh, ideally not questions around uh, uh, custom post types, uh, sorry, custom posts, custom fields, should I say, we're getting to that, but not today. Uh, but if you have any questions around what we've done right there, let me know in the chat or via, via uh, Mike while I, while I take another break and then we'll look at deleting. I, I, I'm getting a, an error, but I, I know that I, I missed the part about what we're supposed to get rid of for the uh, the Ajax code. Okay. Review that part again. Uh, sure. So um, let me. What before we before we look at that? Um, sorry, Michael, is that you who asked the question, or is that someone else? I see someone's hand up. And Michael, did you ask the question? That's me. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Sorry, I didn't see the hand, so I apologize. Um, so let me show you in. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm going to just copy this. And then just do control Z. Just go to the back. It looks like you got um, rid of the, the whole jQuery. Sure. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you that in a second. So let me just go back a few steps. If if we don't if we don't come right, then we'll do a little bit of live debugging. So don't stress. I actually did this with um with someone last week. So if you scroll to, if you if you scroll to the very top of the of the window, this mm -hmm. entire jQuery section, so everything from the line one all the way to before the clear the text area opening uh, quote, uh, sorry, comments needs to be removed. Okay. Um, and then in the PHP side, you need to remove the, um, let me show you in, in GitHub quickly. Uh, yeah, found a branch, so this one. On the PHP side, it was um, in the in the REST in queue scripts function, which is on line 43. It's this section about localizing the script that gets removed and the whole Ajax callback at the bottom there. Uh, okay. Was there anything was there anything that you missed out of that? Yeah, I sure did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Both is it working? Is it working now? We'll wait for you right. to check. Thank you. Localize. Uh, not the one for uh, learn fetch posts Ajax requests. 
Yeah, we don't need that either. So oh, that, that can go. Yeah, that, well. that can go as well. And then this localized script call. But make sure you leave this this closing one there. That, that just this bit over here needs to go. Right. You still getting errors? Well, it's, it's not. Now I'm not. I'm not loading. Uh, using the um, loading from the the rest button. Actually, my Ajax button is still there. What's going on? Okay. The, okay. So the, sorry. Yes, the Ajax button. That is, if you go into the form area, it's this load post by Ajax admin button. You can just take that out. That shouldn't cause you any errors though, uh, if it is there. So so remove that as well. Um, okay. And what are you seeing? Is it just not loading? Or yeah, my, yeah. The posts aren't the posts aren't loading now. Okay. Okay. Um, are, do you are you able to open your developer tools and see if you're getting any errors in the console? Yeah, I sure. Uh, yeah, I've got it. I've got it open. Okay. Uh, what what errors are you seeing? Uh, well, I've got I've got Dev Tools failed to load Source Map, which is uh, oh. React. Um, okay, that sounds like it might be something else in your environment that's causing an issue. It might be a conflict or something somewhere. Uh, are you working on a clean local WordPress install, or do you have other plugins installed? I am. It's clean. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me do it this way. Do you want to just? Uh, we might we might struggle with this a little bit, but are you able to copy your entire PHP code that you have currently and paste that in the chat in the Zoom yeah, chat? Yeah. Yeah. Sure can. You can do that, and then I'll load it up on my side, and I'll see if I can see anything. Okay. Uh, do you everyone, or, or just directly? If, um, if you're happy to send it to everyone, that's fine, or you can just send it directly okay. to me. I don't mind either way. <laughs> no, no, no. I send it to everyone. Okay, cool. Uh, right. Let's have a look. Let me just load this up on my side and see if this gives us any errors. Uh, this is how I helped someone a couple of weeks ago, so this is a great way to do it. Um, okay. Let me see what that does. And Okay. Okay, there we go. It's not that's not working, which is fine. That's also not working. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, so let me see if we can continue. Let me just clean this up here and fresh. Clear. Okay, so that's not triggering something. So let's have a look at. So can you can you also paste your full JavaScript file currently? Sure can. Thank you. I'm not gonna lie, I love these, I love these live debugging sessions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. No, no. This is this this for me is why I do these things. So we can figure out together um, what's what's going on. Okay. Um wait, wait, I think you want to so let's just do this and do that and paste on this. Okay. So now I've got everything that you've got. So let's do it fresh. Let's have a look and see. Okay, so it looks like the buttons aren't being triggered. So let me have a look and see what the button ID is. Um ID is w let's take out the HX button. I don't know what might be. Oh, okay, I know what it is. I know what it is. Um, so what I'd like you to do, I'm just gonna reset my side. Uh, you you've you've deleted something that you shouldn't delete, which is not a problem. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So you need to keep, let me just do this. You need to keep this 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 call, this in queuing the file. Your JavaScript file is not being loaded. So at the bottom of your PHP file, underneath your, your form callback, add this code, uh, which will actually load the JavaScript file. Um, and then that should start things working. The NQ, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so the NQ needs to be there, just that Ajax part got taken out. But we still need the NQ to tell it to load the JavaScript file and use the API. Ah, uh, 
Okay. Okay. Are we good? And boom, check that. And let's see here. Fresh load post. Boom. Hello world. Yay. My title content. And boom. Ah, oh, dang it, bad request. All right. Okay. Okay. And cue so, back. So is this is it giving you an error now? Yeah, I got a 400 okay. error. All right, no problem, no problem, no problem. So let's take it. Let's take another step. Uh, let's go back here. I'm going to everybody. I'm going to just uh, make my text a little bit smaller because it makes it easier for me to read what's going on. Um, so what I need now is all of this. And let's add this to it. It's not going to work with your code, Michael. Um, Okay, so you'll learn. Let me just check here. Yeah, you do have a closing tag. I haven't copied it out. So let's just update this on my side there and there. And then you grab your JavaScript. And then you need to here. There go. Let's refresh. Okay. Uh, that's probably me. So don't worry about that. That's probably me being docked. So let me just let me copy the PHP. So one downside about Zoom's comments is it doesn't really, it's not really conducive to working with, with code. <laughs> okay, and then let's take the MQ in, let's take that in. So that will be here, go. Let's push. Okay, there we go. So load by rest, that works. So let's have a little front end, let's add, okay. Learn press test. Okay, so that's getting a 400. So let's have a look at your code. Um, let's check something. This title has content name that is post. Hmm. Jake will shake some comment. Um, just want to your can I just confirm your MQ scripts function? Is it is it mm -hmm. can I confirm that in the register script call you've got the third parameter, you've got array and then WP API? So this line. Yes. There. Okay. Okay, good. Wait, um, can you go back to that one for a second? Because I I've got localized the script. Okay, so you just you just need this. All right, so all right, uh, let's all right, so let's get rid of localized. Yeah, so get rid of localized. Just the localized script function. And then boom, WNQ. That's the last line. Close it out. Okay. No posts. Good. A title. Take still getting the uh still getting a bad request. Okay, what I'm going to do I'm going to just take this out. Um, I'm going to try something, and then what I might need to do is okay, that's what you is not exactly what I wanted to do. So let's just have a look here. It's close to me. Let me just check in. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, so in the uh, add post area, remember we need the value uh, from the field. So the value gets added to Wait, those are that line. And I've got a feeling that will raise my class. 
the feeling that we fix it. So let's do the test. Yes, that was the that was the problem. So at the end of your you're getting your title and getting your content, you need to make sure to specify value and value. Okay, those are in. Working now? Mm -hmm. um, my, my code is identical as far as I can tell. Have you, have you refreshed? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm getting a, um, getting a parse error. Come okay, then there's, then there's, so can you copy your whole create post section and, and paste it in the chat for me? I sure can. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to grab it up now and pop it in here. And let us see. Okay, that is fine. Um, Okay, it's not that. Um, and can you can you copy paste your PHP file for me? All of your PHP code. Something's maybe gone wrong somewhere. Oh, sorry. That the well, that was my PHP file. No, no, it was your JavaScript that you just. It was your create post JavaScript that you just sent to. Me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Have you got some JavaScript in your PHP? I, I put my create post in the uh, in the PHP file. It's got to be in the rest API, in the rest API. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's in it's in JS, and I did not add value to the, Let's add the value. It's like a snowball sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, Give it a try now and see how it's going. I just get back to. I can't get this. Uh, Where is it? I'm getting a syntax error and I I didn't even I didn't even touch those lines. Um what kind of what kind of error? What's it telling me? Uh it's a clear post, a clear post button, a syntax error, unexpected identifier, clear post button. Okay. Uh, so that would be up here somewhere. Why don't you grab your whole JS file and paste it in the chat? Let's have a look. JS. So everything in the JS file. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me grab all of this. IDs match. And then will you do your PHP file as well for me? Okay. So I'm looking at the same code as you. Yeah, this is your this is your JavaScript file. So you've got some, some JavaScript in your PHP again. This at the bottom here needs to not be there. The clear text area button JavaScript. If that's in your PHP file, that's going to give you issues. The, you said that the clear text area button. Let me, okay, let me, let me show you. Let me paste, let me paste the, the PHP stuff you just sent me. Give me a second there. Uh, so if we I'm going to paste your code in my PHP file. Okay. And the clear text area button and the clear post button at the bottom, that's JavaScript. So you don't want that. So delete that. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. So now it should be, let me, let me test it on my side. Now we should be, we should be, we should be cracking. There you go. There's all the posts. And there's our post created. So now you should be on the same page because I've used exactly your code. Um, you just got PHP on the one side and JavaScript on the other. Post save, my alert worked. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Um, so now that we can create posts, now let's see what it would look like to um, to delete a post. So again, we're going to use uh, a form. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, a delete post. So I'm just going to, in Visual Code Studio, I'm just going to format this a little bit. Um, um, there's an option in selection. No, don't use 
Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control Z a few times and go back in the history. So let me just do this. Okay. Um, okay, so there we are back to that. So that's back to that. That's great. And then let's pop this back on. Um, so that gives us that and that. So we can take care of the jQuery stuff. And very quickly going to uh, get my code from my notes and make sure that we are where we need to be. So please give me one second. Um, this is a, a mental note. If you ever are going to create uh, code content for any kind of live workshop, always keep your code examples handy so that you can very quickly get back to them uh, if you ever need to live and back some things. So we're just going to reset all of that. So we're back to where we need to be. There we go. Okay, good. Um, so the one thing that I wanted to just mention before we go on to delete it is that you'll notice that all of these posts we're creating uh, are set to draft mode. So that's a default setting that WordPress uh, creates if you don't specify a specific status. So you can fix that uh, by simply adding the status field to your, your object that you're, that you're passing to the post model and then setting it to publish. Um, and that is one of the one of the settings for publish. If you have a look at the, the documentation for posts, if you have a look at the schema and you scroll down to status, it says there a new status for the object. Uh, and it's one of publish future draft pending or private. And those are all the services we are used to um, in, in when working with WordPress. So once that is done, uh, if you go back to your, your admin page and you now create another, why is my typing not working? Another Sorry, let me just mess with that. Um, another post where then I'm going to grab the, the block content for this one, just for the sake of passing in some block content. Um, no, that's not what I want. I want that. Uh, and let's say some more new content just to make it more interesting. Um, and if I now add that, it's going to add the post. And then once I have it OK and I hit load posts, there my another post is sitting in my list of posts because the request is only going to request published posts. If I wanted to request draft posts, I would need to, to set that up in the filters um, or whatever the case may be. So any, any of those fields that exist in the schema, you can be posting values to uh, and it will then set them up. So you'll notice that uh, you can set up the type of post. So that's where it's custom post type or not, whether it's a post page or a custom post type. You can set up a password for password protection. All of the fields that you can set up in a default post, you can pass into the object via the REST API when creating the post. Okay, let's move on. Um, and the next thing we would like to do is we would like to, sorry, I'm struggling with the Zoom controls. They're in my way all the time. Uh, so I'm moving them around. The next thing we would like to do is we would like to delete a post. Uh, so I'm just going to grab my form uh, because I like the way it's laid out. Uh, and I'm going to pop a copy of it right at the bottom here. And I'm going to say delete post. And then I want to maybe pass in the post ID because I want to delete via ID. So this will be WP Learn post ID, for example. Uh, we'll still leave it as text. That's great. We don't need the content, so that's fine. We can delete that. Uh, we need a button. And let's call this WP Learn delete post uh, so that we can you know, connect to the right uh, button in the, in the JavaScript code. And we'll just say delete here. Now, with adding this, I'm going to add this code into the into the chat. So if you need to add it, you can do it on your side. This needs to be added to your, uh, your render admin page function in the PHP file. Um, we want to be able to get the IDs in the load post so that we can see what the IDs are so that we can then delete them. Um, and if we go into the API uh, JS file and scroll up to the load post button area, we are loading the posts. We can see that in this data object, we're just returning the title. So now we want to return the ID as well. And the cool thing about the way the REST API works is in that field property that you're passing to the request, you can use a comma, comma delimited list of fields that you would like to see. So if I just add ID and a comma to that list, it's now going to return the ID and the title. And then in this text area value, uh, I want to append the ID to the string. So I can say post ID 
uh, and then I could uh, concatenate that with a comma or whatever the case may be, maybe a dash, whatever I want, or a hyphen, and then add that to the string that is being forked. So in the load post area, I'm adding the title to the fields object. In the loop, I'm adding the post ID. And if we have a look at what that looks like, um, let's refresh this. Now when we load the posts, the ID shows up so we can see the ID that we're working with. So now we can delete that ID. So let me just pause that for a second and make sure that everybody's up to scratch. Um, so this is what the HTML looks like to add to the form to delete the post. I added that to the chat. And then in the REST API, find the area where you're loading posts. So it's the load post button area. Um, go into the all posts fetch. In the data, we're going to do ID comma there. So that it returns the ID. And then in the for each loop, so let me just copy this out so that we can see what that looks like if they need to update it on their side. Um, in the for each loop, this is what it's going to look like. We're basically just appending the ID to the string so that it shows in the text area. Any questions on all that? Do I need to pause before we continue? Everybody happy with that so far? Okay, so I'm gonna move on from here. Um, we now have the ID that we're expecting. So we're probably gonna type in something like 136 and hit delete to delete the ID. Um, so let's see what that would look like in terms of deleting it. Um, and if we go over to the uh, Backbone JavaScript client documentation where we have the model examples, I'm gonna paste that if I wanna jump around there. Um, there are model examples, there are collection examples. And under the model examples, you can see I think it's in this one here, or it's somewhere around here. I'll, I'll find it in a second if it's not. But there it is. We can destroy a model. So we can set up the model um, based on the ID field, and then we can just call destroy, and that will then call the delete uh, uh, method to the, to the post root to then delete that post. So again, we pop back over to our JavaScript file. And again, we're going to be doing the same kinds of things. We're going to set up the buttons and all of this. So I'm just going to basically copy all of this code for the submit post. And I'm going to replicate it for the delete post. And to do that, I'm going to remove most of this code here. Uh, we'll leave the title for now because we're going to fix that in a second. Um, the button we called WP Learn Delete Post. So that's the ID we're going to use. So that will be delete post there. Uh, and we're going to make this the delete post button, which is perfect. And then again, we need to replace submit button, submit button, submit button for the event listener. Then we're going to get the title. And in this case, it will be, sorry, not the title, the ID, I apologize. And in that case, the ID we've set up is the WP Learn Post ID. So there we will get the ID. So there we go. So this is what that code looks like. This is for our deletion button. Uh, everything hooked into the delete. And now we can go ahead and delete it. And we, and we create the model in the same way that we created it earlier. So we can say const, sorry, const post equals new WP API models, post, perfectly fine. And then we can pass in the same kind of object. And this time we can just go ID and pass in the ID value. Um, and that will then create a model of the post based on the ID. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, over there. Uh, and we're not going to actually physically delete it yet, but I just want to show you what that does. So if we switch back to the admin page and we refresh it, let's load the posts and let's take ID 136, for example, and let's paste that in the field and say delete it. And there it is. There's ID 136. And there are all the attributes that we're, we're using to then trigger the post. So it just has that ID in, um, and then we can use that to destroy the post. So we can say, just like we've done save, we can say post.destroy. Um, so that will destroy the post. And then we want to do something once it's, it's finished destroying. We want to show something to the user. So again, we can use the same done function. Um, we, I, I, I do think it returns a post, but we don't need to use it. Um, but we'll, we'll pop it in there anyway. Uh, there we go. So that's all of that. And we can close this one out. And then again, we can just say the same thing. It's a console log post. And we can say post deleted. Um, 
moment. Let's just make sure the points are right. Where have I done it? This is not the moment. Bracket there. There we go. Um, so that's what all of that looks like. I'm going to paste the small thing in the chat and you to grab it. Uh, there we go. And let's do some checking. So let's refresh. Load our posts. Okay, there's 136 again. Um, we're not going to create it this time. We're just going to delete it. And let's see if what happens if we delete. So there, yeah, post has been set. Probably because I didn't change the, yeah, <laughs> I didn't change the, uh, the text. Um, but anyway, let's see what was in the post object. So there we go. There's the original one that was created. There's the return. Um, and let's actually see whether that post has been deleted. So there's ID 136, another post. Let's have a look at our posts. Another new, a new post, 136 is missing. If we use the load post via REST, sorry, the clear post first and load post via REST, 136 is indeed missing. Um, so that's another reason why I prefer the backbone JS client. It's just that quick. We create the model with the ID, we hit destroy, and we're good to go. Um, it does a lot of the work under the hood for us, and we don't have to worry too much about what's going on. Okay, any questions on what we've done there? Um, it's it's very very simple stuff, very similar to the creation. Um, and I know I say simple, but um, I'm not going too deep into what's all available there. Um, any questions around all of this or anything that you are not sure of? Okay. Um, so that is basically everything I wanted to cover with you all today. Uh, if you want to see this code in its sort of final uh, version, there is some additional refactoring that I that I did do on this on this project. We're not going to have time for it today, but I want to show it to you before we before we wrap up. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong the wrong place. Um, in the JavaScript file, what I've actually done is I've created a function for clear fields, which basically clears all the text areas. I've created a function for loading the posts, which clears the fields and then triggers the loading of the posts. I've created another function for submitting the post, which gets the field values and creates the post, and then a separate function for deleting the post. And then instead of having all of that code nested in the event handlers, um, I'm just basically in the submit post button event handler, I'm just calling submit post, and in the delete post button handler, I'm calling delete post. Um, and that to me is a little bit cleaner, a little bit tidier. If I need to make changes to the fields being posted when I create or save, I can do that in the submit post function or in the delete post function. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, this whole thing that I'm doing here where I'm creating the element and checking if it's valid. There's a lot of duplication there. I can probably clean that up, but I'm not going to do that this time around. So if you'd like to have sort of a look at sort of the next step of refactoring, you can have a look at it on the spot over there. Um, I, like to take, I like to take functionality that will be commonly used um, and put it into its sort of standalone functions. Uh, it just makes things easier and reusable. Um, not that this project might be reusable later on, but we might want to use some of these functions later. Um, so that's kind of what we can do there. Then I just want to show you Postman very quickly. Uh, so let me see if I can uh, load that up. Uh, so Postman is this tool that is a free tool um, that you can download and install on your local environment. There is a link to Postman in the resources slide of this um, of this session. I'm gonna post that in the chat if you'd like to check that out. I'm not gonna have time to go in depth into how it works today, but one of the things that I love about Postman is you can create a workspace and your workspace, you can then create multiple requests in that workspace and you can save that workspace and then you can use it, reuse it wherever you want to. And the other day I reopened Postman and I already had a WordPress test workspace connected to my local WordPress test account with a post uh, get request set up, ready to create a request to the endpoint. Um, and then if I hit send, it will make the request to that to the endpoint and then show me the return data. Um, and so Postman is a great way to test your API endpoints. Uh, we're gonna use Postman next week. We're gonna test the submission. We're gonna test the submission, see what it does, see how it works, what we expect and don't expect. I'm gonna show you how to set it up with your authentication because we might need authentication for the front end. Um, so if you want to join me next for next week's session and you want to get Postman installed so long, please do go ahead. Um, but that's that's a great tool to use. I do highly recommend it. There's a free version and then there's a paid version, which is more for teams, where you can share your workspaces with your teammates. So if you work in a team of developers, I highly recommend checking that out uh, and giving it a try. Okay, that is my bit for today. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned something interesting about how to interact with the REST API today. 
Um, if you do have any other questions after this session, you're welcome to find me on Twitter um, or what's left of Twitter. Uh, you're also welcome to email me. My email address is on my website. So it's just jonathanbossinger.com and go to my about page about me. And right at the bottom, uh, there is after all the nonsense about me, there is a link to email me. You're welcome to email me at that email with any questions, comments, or any future suggestions or posts. I see it looks like someone's actually made a comment on this issue already. Um, yes, thank you. Um, so someone said about custom endpoints, so we'll definitely look at that. Um, and I hope that this is something useful and interesting. We're going to spend a few more weeks on the REST API. Um, I'm also creating tutorials from these sessions, so keep an eye out for those on learn.wordpress.org. Um, my website in the chat, when you do that quickly, it's just basically my name. I'll, I'll, I'll link the about page so it's easy to find my email address. There we go. Um, it's just my name.com. Thank you all for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you all next week.